Hi, my name is Dr. Ben Newman, and this is Ask Dr. Ben. I'm, in a, I'm a coronavirus biologist. I'll try to answer your questions. Um, and uh, yeah, the other videos I recorded today <laughs> were about seven hours ago. So you can see before a long day of work and toward the end of a long day of work. <laughs> Compare and contrast. Next question is from Susan. How you doing, Susan? Uh, let's see. What is your take on the safety of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines? Yeah, it's really good, but I'll, I'll go into detail. Um, I talked to my primary care physician about it. She's on the task force in charge of rolling out the Pfizer vaccine in Texas. Fantastic. Um, and I think this is from earlier before it was approved. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I would imagine she is very, very busy right now. Um, let's see. She was adamant that the vaccine is still in the experimental stage. Yes. And that she's advising all her patients to wait. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Um, very disappointing to hear. What's your take? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my take is much more positive, uh, I think, than uh, your friend's take. Um, uh, yeah, your, your primary care physician's take, rather. Um, so these mRNA vaccines, the thing that I like about them most they kind of get rid of all of the potential routes for side effects. Like, for example, in an old-fashioned protein-only vaccine, you would typically have to put in something called an adjuvant, which is just some sort of thing that will artificially annoy your immune system enough that it'll pay attention to the protein you just injected. Otherwise, you're just <laughs> injecting a little protein, it mostly goes unnoticed, and yeah, the immune response is terrible mess up the adjuvant or if the adjuvant has different effects on different people then in that case i think there's the potential for side effects uh, or bad reactions these vaccines don't have that they don't need that it's really wonderful <laughs> um yeah compare it to a live attenuated vaccine polio vaccine is actually pretty awesome but these things are like unicorns. You have to find a virus that is just broken enough that it doesn't hurt anybody, not broken enough that it doesn't work, and you want it to give, still be close enough, despite its genetic brokenness, that it gives the immune system a fair representative uh, picture of what the virus is going to look like and do. If you can find one of these viruses, <laughs> great. People look for these things for years and years and years. And every one of them has a story behind it where they've had to passage it through monkey brains, literally, yeah, or different kinds of small rodents to try to get the virus used to something that's not a person. And then after a while, you put it back in a person and say, is this the same or not? Yeah, and uh, it's very trial and error-ish uh, compared to the new vaccines. I really like the mRNA vaccines because they go in, they show your immune system a little something, and then they are gone. Yeah, messenger RNA breaks down really quickly. Um, the vaccine dose, if I remember correctly, only lasts about 36 hours based on the backlog of research for this type of vaccine um, in animals. Yeah, uh, and so I think it's going to be very similar in people because you're running into the physical limitations of what it means to be RNA. Basically, you're running into the reason why they keep this stuff so cold and wear gloves or double gloves and just treat this, you know, <laughs> in the most delicate, dainty way possible. It's because RNA is really fragile. So you put this into a person and to vaccinate somebody, you have to show their immune system something and the immune system has to pay attention or else it's not a vaccine. You're just doing stuff that is unrelated to immunity. <laughs> um and these seem to do it. And the antibody um, results from the Moderna vaccine in particular, which is an enormous amount of messenger RNA, but still a very temporary amount, it looks really good, a really strong response. When you've got the actual virus, if you're gonna compare it to that, the virus is actually working very hard to immunosuppress you. It's probably not just trying to shut down your immune system. The virus is probably still trying to shut down the immune system of the bat that it used to be in like a year ago. And it is just overwhelming certain components of intracellular immunity. Yeah, yeah, the, the um, yeah, some of the innate response uh, for people that know about that stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, with the messenger RNA, 
all it is is a set of instructions. It tells whatever cell gets this message, like a little message in a bottle. Make me a little bit of this protein. Just do it. <laughs> and so the cell does, and it makes a little bit of spike protein, and it sticks up on the surface of the cell. And some parts of it can fall off and get picked up by the immune system. Other parts can get recognized right there and picked up by the immune system. You may lose a couple of cells uh, to this if you get a nice, strong immune reaction there. That's uh, part of why you get a little bit of swelling and it's a little bit sore and tender for like a day around the site where they're injecting all this stuff. But yeah, if it works, it's a whole lot better than COVID. Yeah, for sure. And it's potentially the key to get rid of COVID. Um, I cannot see any reason why anybody would want to wait for this. There may be some people who have had bad allergic reactions to vaccines before, but this is a different kind of vaccine. It would have no components in common with those old vaccines. And uh, so far, the safety profile has been admirable. Yeah. Uh, about 1% of people have enough of a fever that they would need to take a little bit of uh, ibuprofen or Tylenol or something to knock it down. And that seems to be it, other than soreness in the arm, which inject something in the arm, you're going to get a little soreness in the arm. That's, you know, <laughs> fluid physics plus, yeah, the way nerve cells work <laughs> when you squeeze them. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, I, I guess I'm very much on the other side of this, but those are the reasons why. Having looked at not just this little tiny approval process, which is like the tip of the iceberg, but looked at the entire story of these things, which goes back and back and back. They were doing stuff like this in the 90s. Um, it, it's they're really safe i mean the knock on them is that they didn't used to work as well and it was really hard to make enough of any of these things to actually do a dif do yeah make a difference uh, do the job and i think part of that was tied to uh tied into the thing where it wouldn't work so well because people gave really small doses and they're giving really big doses now of this stuff and yeah, it is the safest way I can think of to do any kind of vaccination. Much safer than BCG, much safer than any vaccine they want to name. Not that those are bad. Those are actually all pretty good and actually approved. But uh, yeah, this is just in another category. Um, now, the one thing that uh, your doctor says that I would agree with is that this is an experimental vaccine, which is why it has emergency use authorization and not full approval yet. They are going to wait, and this is a rolling reauthorization. So as long as the data keeps coming in, the data keeps looking good, and nobody's getting particularly sick from the vaccine, then this will continue, and maybe someday, you know, yeah, Pinocchio will turn into a real boy, and it'll be a real vaccine that you can get anywhere outside of a pandemic emergency. For now, it is something that can only be given in a pandemic emergency, which, thank goodness, we are definitely, definitely in. So, as the one perk of a pandemic is that you get emergency use authorization approval to try things a little bit sooner than um, otherwise you would. That's it. That's uh, the story, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I will convince any doctor of anything. But yeah, maybe I can convince you, and it sounds like you might already uh, um, uh, have some inkling that uh, yeah, that this this is the way I would respond anyway. So thank you very much. This has been Ask Doctor Ben.